The racing carnival is upon us and at City Search we've come up with our very own survival guide to the races to make sure you have the best day possible. <laughs> First and foremost, for all the fine fillies and colts out there, you need to be looking your best in the fashion stakes. The races are a great excuse for ladies to dabble in a little bit of retail therapy, so pick out the prettiest dress you can find, strap on your highest heels, and of course, don't forget the hat. It's a must have for the races. If you're not into hats, a fascinator or a headpiece is a great alternative. Looking fabulous can often compromise comfort, so be sure to have a pair of comfy flats that match your outfit tucked away in your handbag for later. And for the guys out there, it's time to dust off your suit and spruce up your outfit with a colourful tie or even a pocket square. And of course, if you want to look like a serious race goer, why not wear a hat? The classic pork pie hat will make you look like you know a thing or two about the horses, even if you don't. There's more to the races than getting frocked up and socialising over a few glasses of bubbly. It's also a time for the racing aficionados to shine. There's nothing like a good pun on the horses and if you're looking to improve your bank balance, these tips just might come in handy. We've got Hugh and Jake from Betfair with us now, guys. It's very hard to pick a winner sometimes. How do you go about it? What, how do you read a form guide? Matt, it's simple. All you need to do is uh, know the horse's form, so if there's a one or a two or a three next to its name in recent starts, that's a good sign. If it's one at the track before, great. If it's one over the distance or, you know, in similar situations, wonderful. And if it's drawn an inside barrier, the closer to the number one, the better. Then once you've done that, pick some pretty colours and you're done. Sounds pretty simple, so you must win all the time then. Oh, yeah, all the time, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just ask my bank manager, yeah. <laughs> now, Hugh, once you've picked a winner, how do you go about placing a bet? It can be a bit confusing if you haven't done it a lot. First things first, you've got to find a line that's uh, small enough so you can actually get a bet on. It's a pretty good bookie, uh, bookies ring down here. It's thriving at the moment. There's plenty of people. So find the, li find the line that's the smallest, find the odds that are the best, and then, uh, and then have a punt. So once your bets are in place, it's time to sit back and hopefully reap the rewards. <laughs> Races are a big day, so you need to be in it for the long haul, and if you're a stayer, you want to be in good nick for as long as possible. So a picnic rug and some fold-up chairs are definitely a must-have. The races can also be an expensive day, especially if you've been unlucky on the punt. And while you can't bring in your own alcohol, you can definitely bring your own food. So pack a gourmet spread and make sure you bring an esky to keep everything nice and chilled. And don't forget to bring bottled water as well. Keeping up your water intake will only keep you fresher for longer. The weather can be unpredictable, so it's best to look at the forecast. Umbrellas for the wet and sun cream and sunglasses for the warmer days. An organised stayer will also make sure they have packed some band-aids for any blisters that may pop up. Panadol and Barocca are also good to have just in case, but probably more necessary for the morning after. Well, hopefully our survival guide has given you some helpful tips to make your day trackside a memorable one. So head down to this year's racing carnival. I think I'm going to go uh, back a winner now. <laughs> <laughs>